I am Coach Coop, and why are you doing a video about Warhammer games? You know, no one actually what you know, no one actually watches your Warhammer content. You need to do a Sweet Baby Ink video and get all those rage clicks. I think you should keep your filthy algorithm dancing to yourself and let me talk about pretty awesome first-person indie shooter under the name of Bolt Gun. <laughs> This is not Bolt Gun. I'm well aware of that. This is Fire Warrior from 2003. Kind of loved the game. You got to play as Tao, introduced to some pretty awesome adversaries for the time. And it went down as not a bad homage to the Warhammer 40k series. No, it's it's good. It's a good game, and especially at, the, at like a couple of bucks on deep sale. The activation. Get it. You and the boys get it. You have some fun. It's just a bit tough trying to deal with these self-serious space marines. Space Hulk Enhanced Edition also made it onto my Steam library, and that little look at it on the PlayStation 4 came with some mild five boosts. It was a Left for Dead on a Space Hulk, which is not a bad idea on paper. It was a little bit hectic. Enjoyment was had with this. All oh, right, we we got to get out of here. Hang on, watch out, Andrew. Sorry about that. Let that one slip past the keeper. My bad. Nothing, once touched by the hand of chaos, remains untainted. You are under the dominion of the Ordo Malleus to assist my investigations into a world that has already felt that fell into it. So it is Quake, it is Doom 1, there's something about this presentation, it's speed, and of course the ride height of the character itself, which really reproduces that initial adrenaline we all felt when discovering the first person shooter. That is obviously deliberate and it really does work. I've recently put Quake 2 Remaster as a split screen review on the channel, have a good look at that if you're into this. And as you can hear, it hasn't held back on that sound design and production. You've got like chaos chattering going on all the time in the background. And I love the way it leans on the sort of grand orchestral signatures that we hold dear with the series itself. It does make you feel like an actual space marine marching through and eliminating all of these chaos minions. There is also a taunt button, which I didn't find until a couple of hours into the game. Pretty gutted. It's well cool, saying stuff to these demons. And of course, slaughtering them with both melee and good range combat. The power sword is predominant, giving it a lot of satisfaction and a slight snippet of slowdown whilst wielding before releasing the actual slash button. That is a very cool feeling. It allows you to sort of get things together, work out your positioning before moving over to the range aspect of the game. Talking of predominant power swords, it does remind me of the Space Marine close quarters gore and noise. That is actually a third person shooter, I'm aware, but it is also Warhammer. And of course, we've got the sequel of that coming up. We're going to talk a little bit and go through some footage of that franchise at the end because it is also an interesting story. Does this adorable thing with its modeling and the enemies or even like corpses or debris in and around the game, everything is constantly facing you so that you don't have to draw more than one angle of maybe a persistent body or something that's lying on the ground. It's well funny. When you circle something, it is always facing you with a 2D image. And I will add that they have put in loads of really cool minor Chaos Demons, loads of Slanesh stuff. It's quite varied. I like the Nurgle, Sprinkle. I was really looking forward to seeing how the Chaos were going to be shown off, and they have not disappointed. The dash also needs to be spoken about. It's woven into a forward only movement, kind of a little bit like Robocop. And it's not a cyberpunk situation where you can actually strafe left and right to avoid fire. You're kind of committing and going forward. That does make you feel quite space marine -y. The bulk of the movement of the character itself is nice and loud. You don't feel like some sort of nimble jumping around everywhere. There is weight in the metal armor and that definitely carries forward along with that shotgun. Oh. 
how am I finding the game's performance? Well, it's impeccable, kind of defaulted onto high, but get this, everything you're looking at is on my gaming laptop, which isn't even a GTX 1000. It's got an okay processor in it, i7, I think, but again, just a good nod to how accessible this game is on a power level. I think it's about six gigabyte and probably runs on a Switch perfectly. This is really the sweet spot at the moment for good video game releases being affordable, being of decent size, and running on just about every system perfectly. How does it fare up against other current high octane first person shooter releases, stuff like Trepang 2? Well, it's not gonna compete with the AAA stuff, but it's certainly giving a lot of those other games are run for its money. I would throw in Rage 2 into that conversation as something that could probably keep up with it. So that's the level of excitement you're dealing with. This is not a mundane Warhammer first person shooter game. Then again, what is? I do want to see more Chaos Marines and I'm looking forward to Dreadnoughts, maybe a Predator Tang, something that's very substantial. There's a Chaos Terminator, Early Doors, and there is a larger Nurgle spawn, don't want to spoil too much. It's in danger of sailing a little bit close to the wind with repeat enemy design in those early levels, but because I'm such a diehard Warhammer fan, the discovery and looking at the new stuff that's coming in keeps pulling you through because you're like, what's going to be on the next level? What am I going to get the chance to fight? Could it have been split screen? Yes. What the actual? That would be such a great aspect. I always hold out for indie games doing what I call a nobody saves the world, which is release a brilliant game that you would crave local cult for, and then they just go and add it in. But then again, that was from the Guacamelee guys. These guys don't have a huge local cult back catalog, so I very much doubt we will ever see that. But man, that hurts. These graphics are easily duplicated for a split screen game and teaming up, friendly fire even, Power swording each other in the back by accident, you know that's the way forward. Is it worth the spend? Well, if you watched the Dawn of War series that I put together, you would have noticed my unhealthily large Steam library of Warhammer games, and I liked to collect them. I like to own as many as I can. They're like little toys. It doesn't really matter how terrible they are. If I can see the little figures in a better rendering or in a different scenario i will but i think for the man on the street this one's definitely a game pass essential because that's easily accessed on the sony side it's kind of around 20 euros 15 quid which is just about right and if that price were to go any lower than 200 percent yes it's value for money at any price around what it's at or going for with discount September the 9th is the date for which this is billed to come out for in 2024. This is Space Marine 2. And I want something in the comments about how big a fan you were of the original because this took way too long to come to the table. Changing like 2011. Good Lord, sweet baby ink, where were you? Yeah, that's a long, long time to be <laughs> in development. Let's hope it's epic. It will be epic. I have been Gauge Coop. I will see you down there.